Imagine your next patient is a 50-year-old woman who requests hormone replacement therapy. How are you going to approach this case? If you're new here, hi, my name is Dr. Erwin Kwan. I'm on a mission to have doctors lead a fulfilling life. In the last couple of years, I've been helping GP trainees to succeed in the MLC GP exam. So let's dive right into the video. So the first thing here is that in the three minutes reading times that you're allocated, it's vital that you prime your case adequately. The difference between a high performing candidate and a candidate who is not doing well is how they use their time. In the priming, it's really important that you consider what questions that you're going to ask to make sure that you make a safe assessment. You consider the suitability of HRT. You consider what's the patient's thinking and why is it that they're coming now. Also, you want to discuss the management plan. So, it's important that you think beforehand how you're going to discuss HRT, what treatment regime you're thinking, what prescription you might need to discuss. If you're not thinking about your game plan and you start thinking it in the consultation, it might be too late and you might find it difficult to manage your time if you're thinking it through as you go along. That's why it's so important that you use your time to prime the case before the consultation starts. Once you've started the consultation, make sure that you ask open-ended questions in the beginning. Ask open-ended questions and let the patient tell you their story. You listen actively to what the patient is telling you. The patient has got a script and they will tell you information. They might be dropping cues. If you're not listening actively, you might miss these cues. These cues are important because by picking up these cues, then you understand more what's going on in the patient's story. There are three buckets that I like to think about when I'm taking a history. The first bucket is a medical history. So this is where you might be asking the physiological symptoms and uh, things like heart flashes, brain fogs, you might be asking about fatigue or muscle aches. So make sure that you ask various relevant questions in the medical history. Most GP trainees are focused so much on the first bucket and they completely neglect one of the other two buckets. So when you're asking questions about um, medical history, make sure that you don't use all your time on that first bucket. There's also the second bucket, which is the patient's health agenda. It's important that we know what's happening in our patient's mind. Because if a patient is worried about HRT, about the risk, or has read things on the news, then they might have some concerns and apprehension. When we understand that, then we can readdress them. So make sure that uh, you focus not on just one, but make sure that you're thinking about these three buckets. So the third bucket is a social implication, a social impact. Don't just speak of a patient as a patient but be curious to know about the patient's life. Consider the person, not just the patient, what's happening in their life, the social situation, the work, the home life. By asking various questions and exploring the social implication, you'll get a better understanding of the context and the nub of the case. And that will allow you to make a holistic management plan. So when you're taking a history in this scenario, Make sure that you're considering the suitability of HRT for that patient. Because if you're not thinking about that, then it's not going to be a safe management. Some patients may have tried various things before speaking with their doctor. So some patients might try black cohosh or they might try other things over the counter. Think about asking these questions that you understand what been tried before. Another really key point here is you want to know where exactly is this patient at. So is this patient perimenopausal or is this patient postmenopausal? Because if you don't know that, then um, you're not going to provide the right management for this patient. Consider asking various questions such as, um, when was the last time they had a menstrual period? Also, you might want to ask sensitive questions and make sure that you signpost your question before asking it. For example, some women who has menopause, they might have vaginal dryness. And if they do have that, that can have an impact on their relationship. So then you might be able to think about what management plan that you might need to consider to help with this dryness. Are you struggling with your consultation skills? 
maybe you need help and you want to get constructive feedback. If you'd like to get help, then click the link down in the description below to see whether I can help you. If I can help you, then we can enroll you on the one-to-one -one coaching program. So the next thing here is think about discussing the management plan. So when you're discussing the management plan, then make sure that you take into account the patient's preferences and circumstances. For example, if a patient has been experiencing hot flushes, then think whether it's suitable to start this patient on HRT. If there is any contraindication, for example, if a patient had breast cancer or if a patient had DVT or PE, then you might consider an alternative form of treatment. So for example, antidepressants could be a suggestion here. So you need to discuss the risk and the benefits and get the patient involved in the plan so that you're not making a plan for the patient, but you're making a plan together with your patient. When you're discussing the management plan, it's important to consider the risk and what would be the best form of HRT for the patient. HRT come in different forms. So there's tablets, there's gel, there's also car with the progesterone. So if a patient has got the womb, then you want to make sure that they have both components of HRT, the estrogen and the progesterone to protect the lining of the womb. Now, the next question would be, how are you going to administer that? Patches and gel are known to have a low risk of DVT or P, whereas tablets known to have higher risk. Also consider the risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and, and make sure that you're discussing the risk for the patient. Besides the benefit with symptom control, HLT may also provide benefits with the bone of the patient to prevent osteoporosis. There could be other benefits such as reducing the risk of some cancers. So make sure that you discuss the risk and the benefits. Also, let the patient know what are the side effects of HRT. For example, it might change the period. They might find that the bleeding is irregular. Some patients might experience breast tenderness or other symptoms. Also, it's important to let them know um, how long to go on this HRT and make sure that uh, you're going to review the patient to see how they have responded. And if the HRT works, then you can consider putting it on the repeat. One thing that's really important here is that you need to make sure that you've got the blood pressure check on the patient and make sure that you've got a recent BMI as well so that you can make a safe assessment as in whether it's safe for the patient to start HRT. For the purpose of your exam, you might find that the information is provided. So utilize that information when you're making your plan. Some women may need to have contraception as well as HRT. So make sure that you discuss contraception if it's relevant for this patient. Based on your assessment, you might want to start HRT on a cyclical basis or continuous. So this depends on whether the patient is perimenopausal or postmenopausal. When the patient, if they're still having vaginal bleeding after six months of starting the HRT, this is not normal and it's important that they seek medical advice because then we get worried about whether it could be something of malignant origin. If you found this video useful, you might want to watch the next video in which I break down case of headache. Click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.